attention. Hey guys, it's Dustin, Smoking Eagles Rod Shop. We're back for another video. So, uh, this is kind of a follow-up video on my DR lawn and leaf vacuum. I did a video uh, a few months ago when I first got this out and put it back together for the summer. It's just kind of like a little review and uh, some ideas and modifications that I had done to it over the years to make it a little handier for me and, and the way I use it. I thought it might help some other people. Um, I got a lot of feedback on that video and a lot more views than I actually expected to get on a, on a leaf vacuum video. So uh, I know it's a little late in the year now, there's snow on the ground and stuff, but I've had a lot of other projects going on and holidays and some other things going on. So I hadn't got back around to putting this away for the winter. So I just wanted to make a little video today and show you guys kind of how I tear this thing apart and how I pack it away for the winter. Obviously, you should be changing the oil and, and draining the gas or putting stable in your fuel. So I'll be doing that. I'll put, I put stable in the fuel before I put it in the shed. And I'm gonna change the oil on the engine before I put it away. But I'm not gonna go over that in this video because I think there's plenty of videos out there that teach you how to change your oil and, and put stable in, in a small engine. So I'm gonna do show you guys kind of what I do to tear this thing down. And, It'll kind of show you all the simple things that I, modifications I've done, how that makes things a little bit easier. I'll also give you guys a few hints and, or tips um, that I have on how to put this thing back together in the summer. As I take it apart, I'll kind of show you how I put it back together and that, that'll kind of help you guys in both aspects of that. I've got the tools here that we're gonna be using for the project. I've got an impact with three quarter inch socket now you guys probably aren't gonna need that because you're not gonna have this modification done to yours like I have here, but I use that to raise and lower my jack. I've got a hammer and a punch, which I use to pull the pin out of the front of the wagon. I've got two three quarter inch wrenches, which I use to pull these bolts out of here to disconnect the engine from the wagon. I've got needle nose pliers. Makes it a lot easier to pull some of these clips off of here that you can't get to or they're kind of stuck on there. And then I've got a Phillips screwdriver that's a multi-tool that you can flip around a flathead or you can use it as a socket driver to pull the hose clamps off of the tube and some other things. So in tearing this apart, what I do every winter is I pull the top off, I collapse it all the way down so that we have just the wagon. I pull the tube off of the side of the engine and then I pull the engine off the front of this wagon so that I can pack the engine away in the shed. And then I just put the wagon outside and I throw a tarp over it. I usually put a tarp on it and a cinder block on the tarp or something or whatever. And then the wagon itself just sits outside and the canvas top and everything and the hose, they all go in my shed with the engine. So with that being said, we'll get right into it. The first thing we're gonna tear off of this is gonna be the hose. So I've got my screwdriver here, I've removed this. Phillips bit so that I can use the nut driver and I'm just taking this hose clamp off loose here and then this one here is one that I've added on because everywhere this has a hose clamp it really needs to and this one just has a little turn knob so you can turn it by hand so I'm going to loosen that up good right like that now I've got my needle nose pliers here I'm going to pull this pin out of the bottom of here. Grab my washer. This rod lifts right up out of there. And I just put my washer my pin back in. Then I can pull this right off of here, and that's removed. Then I have this little clip here with these two bungee cords. I just pull my bungee cords out like that. Pull my bungee cord off of that. Now I have that hose completely removed. And this removed. And these are ready to go in the shed. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the canvas top off of this. To do that, we're just going to loosen this nut on this removable link. Sometimes that's a little tight. Again, I got the pliers, you can loosen it up. I only tighten it by hand, and so it's usually pretty good. Rotate this around so we can pop this off of here. 
Then I just tighten this back shut so we don't lose that. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the canvas top off of our little wagon trailer. To do that, I drilled this hole here. If you watched my previous video, I drilled a hole here and I put a little key in there. So I can use this punch to pull that pin. And I pull my washer and this little punch. Start tapping this out. Now we'll go around to the other side. Our rod's sticking out here. You can usually get a hold of it, get it turning. Sometimes you gotta use pliers. Get it sliding. Slides right out like that. Now I'm just going to lift this canvas top up off of there. With that, you may want to get two people if you got somebody that can help you. I'm just going to flip this back this direction so that it's out of our way. Oh, I got my daughter Chloe's running the camera today, so if you guys like her camera job, <laughs> Make sure you put it in the comments and let her know that you appreciate her helping us out. Anyway, I'm gonna put this rod back in here so we don't lose it. So I slide it back in here. And then I will put my washer and my pin back on. Now that won't get lost. All right guys, so we've made it to the point where we're gonna remove the engine from the trailer. In order to do that, you're going to pull this bolt out here, and there's another bolt identical to it in the back. They're three quarter inch bolts and nuts. I've taken the nuts off the bottom so you guys don't have to watch me do that. That's pretty easy. Just pull your bolt, pull your back bolt, set them off to the side with our nuts over here. Then you're going to take your jack, and you want to position your jack with a piece of wood or just a jack. If your jack goes high enough, this one does but I always use a piece of wood just to make it a little more stable. And you're gonna to wanna to line it up right here with this back pin. You wanna be just in front of it. So you're gonna to wanna to be right there, just in front of it. And you wanna put just a little bit of pressure on it, like that, so that it takes the weight off of the pins. Now we're gonna pull the pins off the back side. Pull these little clips. There's one clip. I'm going to pull a clip off the back of this one. You're going to pull your front pin. And then when we let this down, it's going to slowly tilt the engine back. Right like so. My jack has this little handle on the side, so I kind of got to swivel it around so that it misses. We're going to go down. Now the back of the engine is kind of sitting on the trailer here, so now you would manually crank this down but i have a drill so i can set it right on here and i can run this down pull my jack all the way down like that now i can pull my jack out and the front wheel of the engine and the back two wheels of the engine are sitting firmly on the ground. Now you can pull your rear pin. It's kind of tricky to get to. Sometimes you gotta kind of wiggle this around so you can pull your pin out like that. And now the rear trailer is completely disconnected from the engine. So now, so we don't lose any of this hardware, I always put my pins back in to the engine side with my clips. On the 
back. Then I also take my bolts. I put my bolts back in here. Then I just screw the nuts on the bottom side a little ways. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the bolt in from the bottom side. I'll put the nut on the top. Just as kind of a visual. Because if the nut was on the bottom and it just fell off randomly while we were moving this thing around in the shed or something, then you wouldn't know that the nuts were gone. This way, you'll be able to see because if the nut falls off, the bolt will be gone and the nut will be gone. Now this is completely disconnected and we can roll this wherever we want to put this. We're gonna slide it over here just so it's out of our way. And we wrap this cable around here and hook it on itself. so it's not dragging on the ground. Same with my bungee cords. All the bungee cords I end up with, I wrap them around here and hook them on each other so that they stay with this. This wagon is done. Now you can use this as a wagon all summer long. You just set her down on your hitch on your lawn mower, tractor, four wheeler, whatever you want, and use the pin out of the front of this engine right here. You would use that to hook that trailer on. Now, they do recommend, DR recommends, that you disconnect one of these shocks, either this one or this one, if you're gonna be using this as a dump trailer with a lawnmower or anything because these two shocks are set up to assist you in dumping a full wagon full of leaves which is extremely heavy and so if you try and use this if you pull this lever with both these on here it shoots up i mean if you had the bale of straw in there it'd probably throw it at your face i mean it, it shoots up and you can't hardly push it back down because it's just so strong so they recommend you take one of these off we just don't use it as a dump trailer we just rake stuff out of it and things like that so and we i've got another trailer that we use a lot more than this because it's a little bit bigger but for smaller things, you just need to grab a trailer and move something. This works really well. All right, so now we've made it to the top, the canvas top here. We're gonna tear that down, and I'm also gonna show you kind of how I put it together at the same time, and hopefully that helps you guys. I know these things are, are kind of difficult to put together until you get a little practice. This thing is, they're, they're, they're taut, man. So, first thing I like to do is either the front or the back. I usually do the back. You just unscrew these nuts here. There's four of those. And I have a sandwich bag that I usually put all the nuts in. That, that way I don't lose any of them. And those needle nose pliers come in handy for these nuts too. If one of them's stuck, we'll, we'll say that one's stuck there. You can open your pliers up like this and just kind of put them on there. They give you a little extra leverage to break them loose. Or just snug them up a little bit if you are afraid they're a little too loose. Okay, so I got all the nuts off of there. Here, Clay, put these in your pocket. Now, there is a little rod inside here. And there's a little snap. You can pop the snap off right here. And then I use these pliers. It's not really a rod, it's like fiberglass. I pull that out. Put it in our trailer. Now this is Velcroed on here. So I pull this off of here. Okay, now. The trick to putting this on and taking this off, this whole back arm assembly, you can see how that wobbles a little bit. You need to get that on and off of there without tearing these threads up and it's very, very tight. The trick is to tip this on its side, like this. Now if you look right in here, 
there's a little piece of steel right here. It's a little lip. What you can do is you can put your foot on this lip and it gives you leverage, okay? So I put my foot on this lip right here like this. Then I can grab up here and I can lift up and slide this off of here. Or you can stand this way, however you gotta do it, because you gotta lift this up and off and it is not easy. But this is the easiest way to do it. And you just start walking it off of there. Halfway. Just like that. This whole bar is off of there. So when you want to put this bar back on, let's say you were installing this for summer, you would do the same thing. You put the bottom on first. So you've got the bottom on down there. You're gonna put your foot on this little bar. You're gonna swing this back here like this. Lift up, line those up, and they slide right in. It's, it's a little tough, but it's doable. So that's how that comes off of there. Now, I like to flip this back down. And I like to take all these nuts off the front of here. So I'll take these nuts off and we'll be right back. All right guys, so I got all the nuts out of the front of here. So we're gonna stand this back up and use the same method that we did on the back side, on the front side. And this has actually got a piece of steel in the back of here. There's a couple pieces of steel in here. So it kind of folds in the center. But again, you're gonna do the same thing. Step on the bottom, lift up. That's gonna slide right off of there. Now you've got this piece of steel off of here. And as you can see, see it's, it's flexible in the center, but there's steel here with the bolts in it. So when you're gonna reinstall this in the summertime, or the fall, I mean, you're going to put the bottom on, you're going to bring it in here like this, you're going to lift up like that, slide that right on, and then you kind of got to lift up and kind of wiggle things around to get these other bolt holes to line up. Kind of like that, kind of lift up, it's a little tricky because they like to fall kind of down. There's one. There's one, and then we would do the bottom the same way. Oh, the bottom fell off. Bottom's back on. And once you get the bottom on, you can put a couple of nuts on there to hold that so that it can't fall back off like it did on me. But we're trying to take this thing apart for the winter, so we would slide this over like that. Gotta pop that one in, pop this one in, pop the next one in. And you can put nuts on those as you go and that's back together put all your nuts on you're good to go lift this up pull it back off if you try and do this any other way you will fight it and fight it and fight it this is the easiest way i found to do it and it doesn't screw your threads all up because once these threads get screwed up a whole nother world of hurt get this out of here we'll sweep that up later so, pop this thing out of here so it's a little easier for you guys to see what's going on. Now, for the hardest part, uh, why don't you come down here, Clay, so you can see up in here a little bit better. So the hardest part on putting this thing together is probably the first part. And when you get this, you're in, this slides onto here and that holds this in place. I'll show you that here in just a few. And then you put this piece on. And this piece really pulls this all tight and it's very difficult to get in here. So you wanna pull this center one first, which is for your eye bolt on the top. Okay, so we flipped this over and I've pulled this eye bolt out of the front and I put a big washer on the front of there, like in my previous video I mentioned, just to keep that hole from ripping out bigger. You can't flip this over and have it flat on this side with this eye bolt on there. So that's why I pull this eye bolt first Now this side over here is a swivel, okay? This side over here has a slot in it, and that's why I've put this washer on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this side. I can, yep, there we go. Thought I might need my, I'm gonna lose pliers there for a second. I just loosen it up just a little bit so we've got swivel room. We're gonna loosen this side. Like 
this. Don't want to loosen it all the way. You want to loosen it enough. And now that can lift up off of there, but there's a little slot and this is keeping it on there. So we can pull this off all the way to take it off like this. And you can push out just a little bit and just lift up and it pops right off of there. Now to put that on, you cannot, you're just not strong enough to stretch this out and pull that on there. I mean, it's not even close to lining up. So that's where the washer comes in. So you're gonna slide this down like this, you're gonna slide it up to here, and then when you push like this, that stretches that material and it, that bolt slides right down that little radius and pops right in its slot. Well, over the years, or over my multiple attempts to put this together, it likes to get to about right here and then pop off, and then you gotta start all over again, and you're fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. So the trick is, you put this little washer on here, Put this nut back on, and you don't want it on all the way, but you want it down on here a little ways, about like that. Now, a longer screwdriver works a lot better, but a little screwdriver will work, just to show you that it will. You're going to want to stick it right inside this little hole right here, this little slot. You're going to push back like this, and you're just going to walk that up like that, and just keep walking it up. Right, like that. And now it's in there. There's no other way to do that easily and get that on there. And I just did that with this little baby screwdriver. Now, if you had a little bit longer screwdriver or like an automotive pry bar of some kind, you can get in here and you'll get a little more leverage on it and it takes a little less effort. But I just wanted to show you, a screwdriver will do it. I had the screwdriver laying right there and it works. And then again, to pull it off, you're just going to pop this off of here. Now, if you don't have that washer, when that tries to pop in there and it pops up, it will go past this and it tries to tear this nut all up and screw things all up. But with that washer in there, over the top edge there, it has no choice but to go under and go right where you want it. So again, we're going to push out just a little bit. Pull up. Try not to tear those threads up. Oh. There we go. It popped right off of there. And then I always put my washer and my nut back on. That way I don't lose my washer and my nut. Good enough. And the threads on the bottom of this bolt are going to get screwed up from this sliding up on there, but you don't use those threads anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then you just come over here and pull this nut off the rest of the way. And this bar comes right out. So now we've got our eye bolt, a nut, and this bar. And I just leave that nut in there, but you could easily put that nut with and washer with the rest of your nuts and washers. This just slides right off of here like this. And then this swings up and this whole thing collapses. So when you want to put this together in the, in the fall, you just swing this down and put this on this way. Then you go and you put this bar in just like I showed you a few seconds ago. So we're going to slide that like that. You obviously want this to swing in this direction. We can stand this up, like, like so. I like to fold the inside in. And then I fold this side in. Kind of pick it up in the center. Kind of make it together. Kind of always stays poofy. Just like that. Now 
we have the entire top collapsed down. I usually put a bungee cord around it and then I stick a couple of the um, other pieces down inside it and I lean it up against the wall in our shed until next time we need it. So I hope this video really helped you guys. Kind of explain some things, maybe give you a couple of tricks for putting this thing together. Again, if you have two people, it makes putting this thing together and tearing it down a whole lot easier. But one person can easily do it, like you just saw, and you only need a handful of tools. So if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll try and answer them the best I can. If I if I don't know, maybe maybe another subscriber or another viewer can can help out answering questions. I always enjoy people chiming in and helping out and telling me things that I've done wrong or I could do better. Uh, it helps me, it helps you, it helps everybody. So anyway, like, share, subscribe, and until next time, keep on wrenching.